Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you how to make a quick and cheap scene controller using my sensors. So I'm using this with my Vera, and when I press one of these buttons here, it executes a scene in my Vera. So I'll just give you a quick demo here. So I don't know if you could hear that, that was the fan that I have running. So when I press the 1, it toggles. So that turns it back on, and then I have over here uh, lights off if I hold it uh, for longer than half a second and let it go. I don't know if you could see it all, but my lights turned off, or some of them did. And if I just press it for less than half a second, it turns the lights on. So these are all programmable. So basically you get eight different scenes out of this four button controller. Okay, so here's the scene controller here. Super simple, super cheap. I think total it cost me about four dollars for the radio, the Arduino, and the keypad. Um, generally I like to try to automate my home as much as I can, but I've found that there are a couple instances uh, where it's nice just to have a quick push button. Uh, for example, if I'm in bed and I want to turn off the fan or something like that, uh, I can do that with the button instead of having to um, try to automate that somehow. Okay, anyway, let's talk about how to build this. So, the radio is just going to be the standard My Sensors Radio Connections. So you can check out the website for that. Uh, and then I just have a, uh, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor here to help filter out the power. Uh, what I've done here is I've used a 3.3 volt uh, output Pro Mini. So that makes my life a lot easier because this radio has to have 3.3 volts power. Uh, and if I don't have that coming out of my Arduino, I need to step it down with a regulator. So instead of doing that, I just got a 3.3 volt Pro Mini to save me some time. So the other connections here, you're just going to slide the keypad in. It's just one uh, unit here, and I just set it up to go from 8 to 7654, and that's it. Um, and the code that I'll, sh I'll show you in just a second is set up to do that. So like I showed before, you just press it once quickly. That ex executes scene number one if I hold it down for over a second and then when I let it go, that executes scene five. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can just program your controller to use those. Okay, before I show you the code, I wanted to show you how I was powering this. This is probably the most complex process or part of the whole build because um, I soldered it. You wouldn't have to solder uh, if you don't want. Uh, there are other ways to power it, but this is how I'm doing it. Basically what I did is just cut off the end of a USB cable, then I just plug the other end of the USB cord into an old phone charger, and then cut off the other end, and then just soldered on a uh, wire onto the 5 volt and onto the ground. And then that just goes into the raw connections. I don't know if you can see it or not here, it doesn't really matter, but the raw connections on my Arduino. So raw is right here, and then ground right here. Um, so that's how I'm powering it. And then just to give you another little bit of a close-up here, the VCC, that's going to go to my radio. So this has to be 3.3 volts going to my radio, like I've already said, and that's going to just come out of the VCC and go into my radio power. So that's that. Let's take a look at the code. Okay, so this is the code. It's actually really simple code, and you shouldn't need to change too much. I'm not going to cover how to install Arduino or the MySensors libraries. I've done that already in some of my other getting started videos, which I'll provide a link to here in this video. Basically, I just wanted to point out a couple of things that you may want to change uh, if you're uploading this yourself. So the um, node ID here, if you're just using auto, you can set that to auto instead of 14. This is my node ID, uh, but you can always change it to auto and let auto sign one for you. Um, so that's pretty much all you should need to change. I'll just show you quickly. Um, these are my row pins. Hopefully you shouldn't need to change those. I think all the four button keypads should be the same. So you should be able to leave those. But if for some reason your numbers aren't registering correctly, uh, you could switch those up here. Okay, then further on down, this is where the logic occurs. So it's a super simple loop. It's just looping through this get keypad, or keypad get key, over and over and over. And then it's checking for a state of pressed. So if it's pressed, it sets the last state to 1. And if it's held, so that's over 1.5 second. That's customizable. You can check out the keypad library if you want to change the hold state 
um, it's customizable for you, but I've just left it at the default. So then it sets the last state equal to 2. So here's my logic. Basically, it's converting this key um, from a char to an int here by subtracting the 0, so that sets the key to 1. And then it's saying if the last state is equal to 2, which was set up here, it'll add 4 onto this number. So all that's doing is getting the C number that it's going to send to your controller, which is done right here. So if you press key 1, it's going to ignore this if statement and just send key 1. But if you pr hold key 1, it's going to add on 4 and send 5. Same thing for 2, it's going to send 2 or 6. You get the idea. So that's it. You don't need to change anything with this logic. I just wanted to show you how it was done. But really, if you wanted to, all you need to do is change the node ID and then upload your code. I'm using Vera as my home automation controller. So if you are too, you can stay tuned because I'll show you how to set it up in Vera. So first, you're going to want to add the device. Um, I'm not going to go into how to add my sensors devices. I've done that in my other Getting Started videos. So once it's added, you can go to the Automation tab, and then you're going to create a new scene, and you're going to want to give it a name, perhaps assign it to a room, and then you're going to want to set up a trigger. So what you'll do is you'll do Add Trigger, and you'll select your scene controller, and then you'll select the type of trigger. So choose A Scene is Activated. So you can give it a name, and then the scene number is the number that will be sent when you press the button. So in this case, this if I use scene number 7, that would be pressing or holding the number 3 button. So this is the key number right here, the scene number 7. So that's all you need to do. And then you can go back to triggers if you want, or just go up here and select your devices. So I'm going to select my device now what I want to do. So I could say turn on a light, um, put up and down a blind, whatever I want. I can do that just, just directly from this device's page or I can program some loop code if I wanted to or go to the advanced. So I'm going to show you an advanced function that I'm using and that's to toggle a light. So I just leave this set then I pick a device and I'll just choose a light. So it's just a random light here. Hit add And then when it's finished loading, I just select toggle state. So what that will do is it'll just turn my light on if it's off or off if it's on. So you don't have to do that. I just like to do that um, to save myself a button uh, or a scene so I can turn my light off and on from the same scene or the same button press. So that's it. All you need to do is confirm your changes, hit save, and test your scene controller. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them on the MySensors forum or in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone.